It's season 10, it's season 10, we're in double digits, double digits. Hello to our dopest of dope villages. Welcome to season 10 of Laughter Permitted. I'm Julie Fowdy. I'm Lynn Ozawi. New season, Lynn. I don't know if I've said that yet. And it's season 10. Let's go. We are kicking things off with someone who gets paid to kick it for a living. Wink. That's right. <laughs> Wink. That's right. It's Lynn Williams. Lynn is an Olympic bronze medalist who also participated in her first World Cup this summer. And oh, yes, you better believe we're going to talk about that World Cup. Lynn was also an All-American at Pepperdine. She's become a key player for the national team. And this year in NWSL, in her first season playing with Gotham FC, she's helped that team go from last place, which they were last season, to sitting in third in the standings right now. Lynn also co-hosts a women's soccer podcast called Snacks with Sam Mewis. And I will say spending time with Lynn was a total treat. <laughs> come on. Come on. So I wrote that. So get comfortable <laughs> listening. It's Lynn Williams. Kick back, relax, and unwind. Let's have a good time finding the joy in life. We're smiling so bright, talking and laughing combined. Feeling all right, get comfortable listening. It's laughter permitted. Lynn! Hello. Hi, Mama. Thank you for doing. Of course. You have a lot of stuff in your background. I look like I'm in a jail cell. <laughs> <laughs> I just added flowers today because I happen to have them. Aren't they They're cute? beautiful. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm a little sleepy, to be yeah. expected. We had yeah. a game. Yeah. Um, Sorry about been... the loss. I saw okay, that. Okay. It happens, unfortunately. Um, and I've been touring around the freaking globe it's been a long season but other than that i'm great it's been a long few years honestly i know <laughs> we're gonna get I, into that yeah god how are sister. you i'm good thank you thank you good. thank you all good i'm home which always makes me happy that's good okay lynn the first thing we do is we always have our guests set the scene where they're at what they're doing that kind of stuff so lynn can you set the scene so i am in Gotham. Well, I'm in New Jersey. I always say Gotham as if this is like a magical place. So <laughs> I'm in Jersey City um, with the team. Um, just came off of a game. Unfortunately, we lost, but we are still in control of our faith. So yeah, you guys are in the hunt. There we go. We're in, Very we're much in the hunt of our fate. So we're going to just keep on keeping on. And that's what I'm doing. Really a bunch of nothing. I had an off day today. So I don't even think I've touched the fresh air today. <laughs> you haven't left the room. <laughs> I have not left my Gotham back cave. Exactly. I'm in a cave right now. <laughs> Is that a lot of couch time under recovery day or just rotating from nap to kitchen back to nap well it was normally i don't spend that much time in bed because i'm like i'm not really a huge napper but today i was like i'm laying in this bed so i laid in bed i've done the big legs i did a red light i don't know if you guys know this about oh, me but i'm light. a huge crocheter so i've been crocheting things and oh, i've just been like that. cool yeah i watched That's the so chelsea cool. game yeah watch like two movies imagine nothing i've done nothing today but everything that sounds like a great day thank you i th I, I have a feeling we could probably go the next 45 minutes just talking about crocheting <laughs> we really could sometimes i'm like seeing things in my brain and i'm like my fingers can only go so fast so i need to chill out wait stop it you see it and then you crochet it or you're like following something no, I kind of just see it and then crochet it. I'm like, what? I am a taught by uh, trial and error. So there's a lot of mistakes that happen. And then I'm like, oh, okay, that worked out. And then I just continue on. But I've thrown a lot of yarn away too. So it's probably not economical. That's incredible. Masterclass, Lynn Williams. Thank you. Crochet clairvoyant. Exactly. 
I also feel like there's a a life metaphor in there. You're weaving a life metaphor. Somewhere in there is life. No, I think it is like I started doing it in 2016 when I was in Western New York and I was like bored all the time. Um, And I was like, oh, I'll just like teach myself a new hobby. And then because I feel like I'm a pretty creative person. I just haven't figured out the outlet to like land on yet besides for my life after soccer. So I was like, I'll crochet these things. And then I started selling them. And then people were getting like giving me individual orders and then i was like i'm gonna get carpal tunnel so my business plan is flawed so then i stopped for a long time (laughs) this is no longer fun yeah this is no longer fun and then i stopped for a long time and then when i got to kansas city and i was injured i was like oh i should pick it back up so then i just like i'll see a hat that i like so i was like oh i'll just learn how to do this hat and then i moved on to bags and then tops and now then like my life got crazy because the world cup and stuff but now i do it when i want to just like calm down when Mm. because i feel like there's so many things going on in my life all the time and i'm thinking a billion different things and it's kind of the one thing that makes me just focus on that one thing and not have all these other distractions so i agree i think it is a life metaphor to just like be present and be where i'm at gosh yeah i should tr- I love that. i should try that you i'm not very that. good at, i am not real good at sitting and being present i i know i find myself i've been having to tell myself don't wish the time away because in my head i'm always okay well what's the next thing that's happening what's this going on i wish this mm-hmm. i want this and then i have to keep constantly reminding myself like don't wish the time away just be where you are mm-hmm. that's my new thing right now be where your feet are. Exactly. Be here now. Mm-hmm. Be where the yarn is. We are really full of joy to be here with you. Because we are here with you, it is worthwhile to dive into this tournament that kind of happened over the summer. Yeah, kind of a big Just tournament. a little, little tournament. Yeah. I'm going to kick things off by giving my personal perspective as a fan cool. as far as what it was like to watch the World Cup. And for me, I would describe it as frustrating. Yeah. So for you, now that you've had a little bit of distance from the tournament, if you could describe it in one word, what would it be? Oh, one word. I have a lot of words, but um, (laughs) (laughs) I think um, to be able to look back now, probably um, confusing Mm. would be my biggest word. Um, Just confusing in the sense that we were, I said this on my podcast, but like we were too talented to end up with the result that we ended up with um Mm -hmm. i think a bit confused at how we were playing i mean frustrated could also go in there as well but more i think that you look at us as a team and we were trying to figure it out and it wasn't necessarily we were like pointing fingers or giving getting mad at each other or frustrated it was almost just like a confused why why are we not clicking what's going on and just why so i would say confusing had you felt that before lynn like that before the world cup like were you feeling like oh we're not quite clicking but it will happen or was that well, new I think it's, to the world i cup? think from my from my perspective it's a little bit different because i wasn't there the whole year prior yeah. i think similarly as a fan watching that year before um you know we had lost to germany and then we lost to spain and we had that stretch of time where things weren't clicking either. And so as also I was, I was watching being frustrated of like what's happening and then coming back into the mold um, and into the team on a, like another personal note, like New Zealand, we did well, kudos to them, but I don't think that New Zealand is the, the competition that we're trying to face all the time going into, into the world mm-hmm. cup. And then we had, she believes which I can't remember who we played. I feel like I've played a million games. And then we went into April camp and like, I didn't play a single minute in the April camp. So the, I think that um, like, it's not that we weren't getting results. It's just, yeah. it almost felt disjointed from friendlies to the tournament. Yeah. yeah. Cause I felt calling games ahead of time. It felt pretty disjointed and it was always like, Oh, they'll clean things up. Oh, they'll get there. But then you look back and go, no, it wasn't it wasn't great then. It wasn't great against Ireland. It wasn't great against Wales. You know, Trinity came in and scored two goals to kind of save that send off game. And then, you know, Mal Pugh might score a few goals. You'll score a few goals. It kind of masked it. It felt like. Yeah, I think that 
there was a lot of individualness that we like relied on. Um, yeah. I feel like anytime we looked mm. at a goal, it was like individual brilliance that somebody was able, like I think of Mal being able to go on and dribble a whole yeah. team and, and then and then score. Or uh, like you said, Trin, I would say the first goal of the Wales game was more of a, a setup play. Um, and then the second one was Trin's ability to just read a, read a defensive moment and then take and then her her brilliance in that moment mm -hmm. and so i don't know like i like you said i think things get mass when you're winning and mm -hmm. unfortunately for us right now it, it was unveiled during the world cup a terrible time for it to happen but i think that moving forward maybe this is exactly what we needed because we now need to look at ourselves and say like okay what do we need to change going forward? What can we learn from this? Mm -hmm. And I think you do that in in those moments. Like I think you do your biggest growing in moments of like anger, turmoil, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. what you have, I'm guessing, I know in these September games, you guys had a kind of a moment to debrief, but it's kind of weird because you don't have your next head coach. But as yeah. players, like when you're going through just those questions, mm -hmm. you know, what comes to mind in terms of what do you need to get better at? What do you need? to extract the lesson from with all of that pain and loss that happened. Yeah, I think like you said, it's a bit confusing because we are in a moment where we have a, a temporary coach and you don't know what the next head coach is gonna come in and do. Yeah. You don't know what the roster is gonna look like. You don't know what the formation is gonna look like, X, Y, and Z. Um, but I do think that what is a bright note or on the bright side is looking at the World Cup, our first three games in group, were not our best play by any means. And I would say our Sweden game wasn't our best game by any means either, but it was a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, nobody can say what exactly it was that made us play like that. Is it if it was a formation change or if it was um, the fact that we were like, this is do or die, what, nobody knows. But one thing that was positive is that the group did come together before that game and said, and we got into basically line meetings and we were like, what can the forward line do to help the middle mm. the midfield? What can the midfield do to help the defense? Like, what can we do to help each other? And we did that just on our own. Mm. Um, and so then moving mm. forward, I think that we need to realize that, yes, we put so much stock into what the coach says and what the coach wants. And we, yeah. and we all are trying to do this game plan, but we have to believe in ourselves a bit more and know that we have what it takes and and connecting more in that way and so i think moving forward we have to trust that we have the skill and the knowledge and and the ability to to come together and and get the job done so um i wish we would have done that a bit sooner i think that we thought we were mm -hmm. going to continue to build and build in the tournament but um do you, you know do you do you feel like it was more on the field or off the field stuff no i think off the field we like the vibe in the group was amazing uh -huh. i think it still is amazing i think oh, that good. everybody is um you know gets along wants to hang out with everybody i don't That's think good. that was the problem either and i don't think necessarily i wouldn't say looking on the field that everybody was like i don't know it's not like you, anybody was like pointing fingers it's like it's your fault like this yeah. is going on yeah it, it was just it's yeah you didn't see that on you didn't see that in games no it was more of a and I've talked about this um, with a couple people too, like you look at um, in Europe or in Spain, like they're all getting to play with each other every single day every, in, or in Europe, there's like four teams. Right now in the NWSL, we are spread across 10, 12 teams and it's gonna be a more and more and more. So you, now we're having to fight, like how do we get subgroups together who have played together in teams? And then it's the, the windows for camps are smaller and smaller. So yeah. I think you have to have more conversation about the game off the field. Mm. And I think that during the Sweden game, we started doing that more. Um, and like I said, I wish we'd done that earlier in the tournament, but you don't know what you don't know, and now we know. Mm. That is fascinating to hear. It makes me wonder, Julie, if you if that is very if that is relatable from your experience as far as there's the coach, but you as players, you also have to take a certain level of ownership. Oh, yeah. And and there will be a lot more discussion and time. The challenge, to your point, is that we used to get like six months together mm -hmm. because we didn't have a professional league. Or if we did have a professional league, we still got like three months together. You yeah. just had more time together. And so the challenge in this environment is you've got people coming from all these different systems and places mm -hmm. and 
cities and you come together and you have less windows because it's so congested to play. Yeah. And so then you're trying to to mesh it all together um, in a quick time frame, which I think is hard. I think it's hard on the field. I think it's hard also off the field in terms of just that time of discussing because you just don't have that much. And then it's, you guys just, it's, there's so much. There's such a circus around the team all the time as well. So it seems yeah. like. I do think, I think that there is, you know, especially right now, I think that women's soccer is in a huge growing moment. But yeah. with that being said, there is so much bs that we have to deal with yeah like spain i'm like that's crazy you should be able to be celebrating your world cup and you're dealing with yeah. a, a whole sexual harassment yeah. thing and uh, jamaica and canada and france and like the list it's yeah. crazy Brazil, how long yeah. you go down the it, list yeah exactly it feels it's crazy. like over half the teams at that world cup alone exactly how long the list yeah. is with that being said i think that the u.s team has always been at the forefront of pushing things forward so i think that and also at the top of the top always. So I think that there is this like aura around the US that's almost like if you don't win, you're failing. And of course, like Julie, you know this too, like we have that mentality always of like yeah. it's winner, winner, go home. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we want to win, but there is this like we can do no wrong. Like we, you go to the world cup and you score 13 goals and you celebrate that's wrong. You now go to the <laughs> yeah. world cup and you don't score 13 goals and that's wrong. Like yeah. there, there feels like there's no winning yeah. with the U S team sometimes. So I that's, like, that really sucks because I think as a fan, I think I'd like to say true fans of the team don't necessarily feel that way. You certainly get it in the media. Mm -hmm. We want to see baller women go ball out and have, the success that they have earned. But to hear though, that there, that is an impact that that is like, we can't, well, I remember it, Alex Morgan actually in an interview with you, Julie, at the 2019 world cup, I want to say that she said something like we're damned if we're due and we're damned if we don't. Uh, yeah. What was your reaction to like the, the vitriol and viciousness like around like people celebrating Megan Rapinoe missing the penalty kick, the team not doing well. I'm like, what, who are we that we're celebrating your yeah. own national team, right? Yeah, Failure. it felt very weird uh, right? for Americans to be rooting against Americans. It felt like, um, I'm not, and the team has dealt with this in the past. Like in 2019, M Megan was fighting with a president like during the tournament. Right. So right. like the whole, it's not the first time, but it did feel very um, str strange for lack of better words uh, of like, do you guys want us to succeed? Do you not? And like Alex said, I think sometimes we're damned if we do, we're damned if we don't. Like we, um, and then when you, we obviously didn't get out of the group in first how we wanted to. And people were like, how dare you guys not do that? <laughs> and we're like, well, we're out of the group. And there's some t big teams here that are not out of the group. And I just kept saying, you know, in 2019, they got out of the group first and then they had to play Germany or sorry, not Germany. They played, who did they play? France. And then they played Spain, like yeah. back to back. Like the right. route wasn't yeah. easy. Spain. Yeah. Spain and then Spain. France, Spain, and then, then, France. then England and then the Netherlands. Right? I know. So I was like, that route mm -hmm. was crazy if you're getting out of the group first. So I was like, there was never, ever yeah. going to be an easy route. It's the world cup. Every single team yeah. is going to be hard to play against. So. I just feel, I don't know. It was like an interesting experience. I think that like when I've been able to take a step back and look at it and look at the, the magnitude of the world cup and like the, how many viewers there were and the teams that were able to perform under crazy circumstances. And the fact that it was in Australia and that will soccer in Australia forever be changed. Like I look at all those things and I'm like, that's incredible that I had a little piece of that. And I yeah. got to can say I'm going to I was part of that um, on the other side, you know, we are the American team and we always have like our expectation is to to win. So we obviously fell short of that. But I think that it's maybe I don't I don't want to say it's the best thing that's happened to us, but I do think that this team is super resilient and always comes back and always has the ability to look at itself and say, OK, what did we do wrong and not point fingers? And I think that's what we're doing right now. And um, last camp, I was really proud of us. We were able to I thought we had some of our best performances we've had in a long time. So Good. we scored in the run of play twice, which we haven't done in a long time. Right. Mm hmm.
And you got two of them, baby. Let's go. I did a little boop and a bop. <laughs> we used to call that the region where it's like right on your hoo-ha and you're like, what do I do with it on my hoo-ha? I know. You're like, I don't know how to thrust this in the goal, but I was, <laughs> they said, get in front you of the keeper it. and make, make something happen. I said, I could do that. So that's what I did. <laughs> I saw that you like laughed because it's like, what do you do? Okay. She's just like, yeah. You're like, just get it over. And then I was like, well, I want to try to kick this. Like, so it's not a scoring with my region, <laughs> but then it just like bounced away from me. So I was like, whatever it's in. <laughs> it all a boop and a bop. A little yeah. boop and a bop. It all counts. It all counts. Exactly. So the day of the final of the world cup, we did an episode with Mia Hamm mm-hmm. and Abby Wambach. And I just want to express as well that, the love that came from Abby, Mia, and Julie for this team was just oozing out of that episode. It was, I'd say, the most compassionate criticism type of a thing mm-hmm. that you could come by. And at the end, near the end of the episode, Abby said something that I was about ready to like run through a wall after she said <laughs> it. If you can imagine Abby Wambach saying something really motivating. <laughs> yeah. And it was about the upcoming Olympics mm-hmm. and that it was 11 months away. Mm-hmm. And she said, you can do anything in 11 11- months mm-hmm. and now i guess we're probably 10 ish or so clocks is, is is moving but what would you like to see in this between now and the olympics for the national team oh well first of all we've got to get a coach we, we need we need a coach kind of uh, important kind of important i think that right now um you know i think twyla and that coaching staff came in for the last camp and did a great job i think that it's we're in a very unique position we have no coach the olympics is very very a very quick turnaround right now and every yeah. camp matters and like i said now that we have so many people across so many teams every moment every second we're together building chemistry it matters so i think that getting a coach in who can get a game plan and and help us start seeing concepts the sooner the better but i think that you know i i want this team to turn around i think that you look at the 2016 olympics to the 2019 world cup that's what i want to see this happen i know that was more time in between but you know the the world cup didn't go how we wanted to but i think we have enough talent and the right players to to get the job done at the olympics lynn do you yes. know that every time the u.s team has lost a world cup what has happened in the very next year they've won an olympics oh yes they have <laughs> and so that's what i want to do i hell. want to be there and i want to have a gold medal around my neck yeah. that's what i want hell yeah yeah <laughs> USA. Exactly. You can, USA. you can go to the grocery store with it. It gets you free desserts <laughs> at meals. <laughs> I, I wear it walking the dog. Hey, do you know I have a gold it's medal? It's just my gold medal. It's, you, it's a medal. weapon. It's so heavy. <laughs> if you need protection, <laughs> it's swinging around. No, that's ours, what I ours want. Ours are little, though. I have, like, I have like metal envy. Size, are they? Size of your medal. Yeah, like our little 96 one was like tiny. I'm like, this is like a quarter. I want a medal. I want a hubcap around my neck, yeah, people. This is vintage. God. Is vintage. That's what they said. They're like, oh, that's how they were in the, you know, in the past. I'm like, I don't care. I want I size. Want size one. matters. I know. I, I We got the bronze one, obviously, at this last Olympics. And during that time with COVID and everything, like you recognize the magnitude, but you don't, especially when you're like yeah. in it, in the moment. Yeah. But the second they like hang it around your neck and you're like, oh my gosh, like my neck is gonna break. This is so heavy. <laughs> That's when it like hits you. Then you're yeah. like, oh, I like just got a bronze medal at the Olympics, but I want a gold one. I yeah. don't want a rose gold one. I want a gold one. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. So that's what I want from this team. Agreed. But we need a coach. We need to like get all. Yeah. We need to start going. But I do think that this last camp um, is moving in the right direction. I think we are trending in the right. Good. Direction. Okay. Thoughts on coach, real quick. Like, what? Before you, oh. I'm not even going to ask you to name names. But well, if you want one. to, you don't have. One. Okay. <laughs> I don't but... have one. I would love to see somebody who has had international experience okay. before. Um, yeah, I was just going to say what qualities you want. I... So international experience. I think I would love to see, um, not necessarily the head coach, but some member of the staff that has been there in the past to stay on, if it even is just one person, Mm. um, just so they know um, what happened in this last cycle and so they can bring it in. I think if you you wipe out everybody, you're like starting from ground zero again. And I don't think we have time for that. 
So you have some institutional knowledge that in history that stays. Exactly. And I think that like we, we need somebody who knows the American mindset, which is, um, crazy, like psycho right. psychopaths a little bit. Um, and I think that, <laughs> that if you have somebody who has, has seen that and has been around it for a bit, they can help with that, um, that connection and that bridge between the two. And then I would just like to see somebody who is going to be either that looks at the team, looks at the talent, looks at the player pool you have, which I'm going to throw out a random number. I have no idea, but maybe it's like 40 people and says, okay, how can I get the best out of these 40 people and mm -hmm. what system is best for these 40 people? Yeah, exactly. Right. Try and trying things and, trying and the things willingness out. to try things, which, you know, for all of Vatko's great traits, I think that was one of the things that always frustrated me is like, let's try a different four, three, three. Yeah. Let's try yeah, something I new. I don't know if we have, I mean, and this is where I do not envy coaches. Like, I don't know if you have enough time right now to do that, but for the Olympics to the next world cup, like definitely, I think you try yeah. a billion well, different things. But you guys have played all those systems. You play them on oh, club yeah. teams. Like you, you'd be able to quickly assimilate and, and be flexible in terms of, okay, let's go to a five back. Let's go to a three back. We're in a four back. I think you could totally do that. So do, I mean, so do I. I think that everybody who is in in the pool has enough knowledge, soccer knowledge, to get the job done. And I think that it's just making sure that we know everything, like that we are being taught. I think that maybe that's also where um, traditionally in the past, like you do all of your learning, quote unquote, mm -hmm. with your club team, and then the national team is where you show what you can do. But I also think that like you need to be taught a little bit more as well with your national team, just because we like, no offense to the NWSL, but we got crazy things happening all the time. Like mm -hmm. some clubs ha lost a coach, got a new coach. Some clubs, mm -hmm. uh, the coach you don't think is up to par. Like you don't know what people are learning and mm -hmm. you don't know, you don't know what you don't mm -hmm. know. So I think that getting yeah. on the same page and, and teaching that mm -hmm. when you get into camp is vital. Um, yeah. But I would say, yeah, I think that we could be flexible. I think you, you show that at, we show that at the World Cup. You, we change formations. It's not a huge formation change, but we yeah. drop Sonnet down, and we ha yeah. that changes things. Yeah, I th I thought that was a huge reason for the shift and so how you guys were playing too, right? Like just a about Megan Rapino as head coach. <laughs> she, she'd be like, hell um, no. I don't know if she would ever. Too yeah, long. <laughs> I don't know if she would ever go for that. And I don't really know. Just putting it out there. She, she she can come for the vibes. She I mean she's intelligent. She's got a a smart brain. But I don't know about her teaching ability. But honestly, you can't put anything past her. I don't know. True. <laughs>I look over like just your last three years mm -hmm. in the, the arc of that in terms of the highs and the lows and I imagine a lot of deep breaths that <laughs> you've had I mean you have had a crazy three years in terms yeah. of uh tearing your hamstring off the bone mm -hmm. right in 2022 don't recommend <laughs> don't do it <laughs> right missing that whole season in 2022 you get mm -hmm. traded which was in your words shocking to you mm -hmm. from kansas city to gotham you go to a team that was in last place last season yeah. you you know now you guys are in third place you're second in the league in goals um you get to your first world cup maybe not the result you wanted but like you have all these yeah. highs and lows and you've you fought through it. Like, what have yeah. you learned about yourself and <laughs> all this uncertainty? I know when you put it, it's crazy. Um, I, well, first of all, I think that my career in general, I have taken the back roads to get here. Mm -hmm. um, I, the I, road less traveled. The road less traveled. You know, I, it's so funny. Like, I'll go into camp and people will talk about, like, well, I played for Region 1 and I played for Region 4. And I, I'm like, I played for Zero Region because I didn't do all that stuff. <laughs> and right. I wasn't – I was recruited to one school. And, I mean, I was Pepperdine. drafted, but, like, I had to fight to get onto that. And then I just felt like my whole career, no matter what it is, it's been a fight. Um, and But I also feel like I've had a lot of success – and for some reason, sometimes when I am even like scoring and doing great, people are still doubting me. 
And so I, I think that, and I, and then my whole career is like riddled with injuries and last year was like a huge one. And I'm sure you guys know that the older you get, the harder it is to come back from them. So, um, I just think that, you know, what I've learned from myself is a a lot of things. I think I'm resilient. Mm -hmm. Um, I will always back myself no matter what. And then I think that I recognize that there's also a life outside of soccer and to Mm -hmm. find the balance between soccer and, and you know, life as well. Um, I've been dropped from the national team. I've had to sit out and, and find other things that make me Lynn that aren't just soccer during injury. Um, and I think that going into this world cup and going into, you know, this latter part of my career, that has really helped me that I just want to enjoy it. I think I play my best soccer when I'm just having fun and then leaning into what makes me great. Um, I think for a really long time, I was like, why does everybody only talk about me as the fast person? And like, they don't see all the other cool Mm. things that I can do. And I really felt like I allowed that to stunt myself. And I'm like, no, Lynn, just lean into it. Like you're fast. You can, you don't have to do a billion moves because you can just get past them by running. Like why, Mm. why lean out of that? Like lean into that, that makes you great. Um, And then I'm like, well, obviously I have all the other things because I wouldn't be here if I didn't. So mm-hmm. stop letting other people dictate or change your mood or, or your opinion about yourself. So I think that is what I've learned, but definitely resilient, I would say. Yeah. Hell yes, you are. <laughs> that was a great answer. Yeah, I'm like, no, but it just doesn't matter. Like, I think that that is the biggest thing. There's so much noise and there's so much yeah. noise about yourself, about the national team. But yeah. if you're not in my phone, if you don't have my number, if I don't have your number, I don't really care about your opinion. Yeah. Like, I'm like I if I wouldn't go to you for a problem, why do I care what you think about me? Like, mm-hmm. I can't, again, I'm damned if I do, I damn it don't. I can't please mm-hmm. everybody. Right. I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. But I, hopefully, somebody will see me and say, like, wow, I can do exactly what she did. Or I don't have to go through this path. I can go this, it, it's a longer path and it, it's really hard. But, like, you can go yeah. a different way and you can get to the national team or you can have success as well. Uh, That's amazing. I had a uh, I had a dear friend say to me once, "If you're pleasing everyone, you're doing something wrong. There's no <sighs> way in hell you should be pleasing everyone. It means you're not standing up for something." And I'm like, well, yeah, if you're, mm. "Yeah, and you're not probably not pleasing yourself. That's yeah. the yeah, yeah. If you're pleasing everybody, you're not you're not pleased." Yeah, I was like, "Ah, oh, you're right. Screw you, people that don't <laughs> like what I say." <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think they're care. We're all humans. Like we all have different opinions. And I think that's what makes us great. It's just like the way that we talk about things or the way we go about it and being respectful. And for some reason, I think that social media has allowed us to get a little crazy with what we're saying to each other. Yes. I'm like, why? I'm like, you don't even know me. I don't know you. I would never say that to you. What's happening? (laughs) Yeah. But that's what I've learned. It's been a fun ride though. Like I think now, because I think like once you um, don't have, I don't know if you felt like this before, Julie, but like you, have you ever seen um, like those documentaries about people who go to the Olympics that like you train so hard for them, they come four years, it happens. And then you go into like a little depression. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to say that I was depressed coming out of the world cup because I don't think I was, but I was a little sad and I was like, what's the point? for at some point like and i had to like work my way out of that and be like okay no i just i really like playing soccer blah blah blah, all the things yeah yeah but i think that at one point i was like if i end now and i look back i could be so happy with my career i've done all of these things and it's so true like i think that we forget to and maybe it's hard to do it in the moment while you're in your career but we forget to look at like the steps that we've done and the the achievements that we've done along the way and that's something that i'm also trying to do is say like no i yes that was one moment of not having the success i wanted but i also still did get to go to the world cup and i did do this and i did this and i'm like i tore my hamstring off the bone last year the fact that i'm even here and was able to fight to get here walking yeah i'm like start with walking (laughs) i know so i'm like we gotta like take a second and and just look at all of our achievements and our accomplishments and because we're never gonna get back and they're just gonna pass us by and we're always like so forward thinking all the time that i'm like let's just take a second take a breath and and 
mm-hmm. and slow down. So be here now. Be here now. Yeah. Put my hat on. <laughs> and that's why I now crochet. <laughs> Mia Hamm gave Julie a hat that says, be here now on it. Yeah. Oh. She had one like that. And I said, oh, my God, I love that hat. It was during COVID. Mia like, loves a hat. Yeah. She oh. loves a <laughs> So flat does Julie. Bill Julie hat. loves a hat. A yeah, flat she, bill? Because she, she loves her, a flat bill. She's always got her, like, <laughs> surfer hats on. <laughs> I know. Well, that's good to know. You love a hat. I love a hat, too. I, I mean, I got a lot of hair. When you got a lot of hair and I don't like to comb it, I don't like to shower. <laughs> right. I don't have to. I can't really, my head is really small. So like hats don't really fit me well. That's my issue too. Yeah, the lens have small heads. <laughs> small, I recently found a hat heads. that perfectly fits my head. So I'll give you the details on it. Perfect. Like I can't share sunglasses with people. Like I don't share hats. Same. Everything is like stretched out. Marley, my fiance, has the biggest head, and he's always like, let me put on these sunglasses. I'm like, no. <laughs> Go stretch him. So count yourself blessed with all your hair and your large head. Oh, God. I guess. <laughs> it is now time for the Lynn game. The Lynn game. Time for some competition. I told me I got Lynn my Williams keys. Williams is ready with her noisemaker. She's got some keys. Julie, what do you have for the game? I have a new one that you don't even know, oh. Lynn. Oh boy. Because I brought a wine glass and a. This is in honor of Lynn getting married. <laughs> oh, thank you. December well, wedding, right? December wedding, Yay! yeah. I mean, it's the only time we can have. We, literally, the only time we have. Everybody's anniversary is the same, basically. Yeah, right? Lynn, Julie knows the rules of this game, this game so I will roll through them okay. for you. There will be five questions best of five wins they're all multiple choice okay it, what kind of questions are they so they're all uh it's a, it's a trivia game this episode's theme is know your lens oh all no. questions featuring the name <laughs> no. lynn oh no <laughs> i'm nervous okay i'm ready though all right just remember multiple choice there will be options okay okay Question one, Loretta Lynn was a famous country music singer songwriter. What was the musical film called that was based on her life? Was it A, Coal Miner's Daughter, B, I'm a Honky Talk Girl, or C, Hey Loretta? <laughs> Julie. Coal Miner's Daughter. Correct. Ow! Oh my I, God, I can't believe I got one right. Lynn, I, I never literally, get anything right. I was going to yes. say, I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> I totally just guessed and I got it right. Yes. All of these, all of these questions kind of have that, um, have that element where it's really obscure because okay. Lynn is not necessarily a super popular first name or No, it's not. It's a definitely middle a middle name. name. Yeah. And now everyone who names their kid Lynn is going to think they have small heads. <laughs> And they're going to be worried about Who that. Who knew the common denominator among Lynn's? <laughs> small head small Lynn. Head, small head small Lynn. Lynn. <laughs> Question two. Oh, gosh, this is just, okay. Lynn Shear, it, Lynn Shear is a broadcast journalist and most famously reported for which of these news magazine TV shows? Is it A, 2020, B, 60 Minutes, or C, Lynn? B, Incorrect. <laughs> or C, Dateline NBC. You know, <laughs> can't guess Lynn, again. <laughs> I'll allow it. C. Oh, shit. Incorrect. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Julie. Dang it. Hey, 2020. 2020. Dang okay. it. Too soon. Okay, okay, okay. Question three. I like the confidence in which you shook those, those keys, though. She's like, I got this. It's false confidence. Lynn, question three. Three, Lynn Williams is a professional soccer player. Where did she go to college? Was it A, North Carolina? Oh, you You can can buzz buzz in any time. She can buzz in. Any time. Yeah. Pepperdine. Whatever answer that one is. (laughs) If you get that one wrong, I'm going to be worried about you. (laughs) Okay, two to one. Question four. Lynn Manuel Miranda famously wrote and starred in the Broadway show Hamilton. What other Broadway show did he write and star in? Good is it one. A, In the Heights, B, A Star is Born, or C, Wicked? Lynn Williams. Um, 
B. Oh. <laughs> Incorrect. A in the Heights. Correct. Why do you oh my know God, that? I crushed this game. I cannot believe it. Why do you know it. that? Why do you know you that? You know why? I was just on a plane, and it was playing on the plane. And I was and like, you looked at the credits. And I, I was like, what is this? And I was le- reading the little teaser, and I, I didn't watch it, but I, I saw it was Lin Manuel. I was like, oh my God, I want to watch that. Well, but how it was do you really know the long. other ones? Um, oh, the other ones I guessed. <laughs> Well, one I gave you. So. Well, yeah, exactly. I only had to guess on one because you gave me the other one. Thank you. Most pressing questions. Favorite part of doing your snacks podcast with Sam Mewy. Oh, I got a lot of favorite parts, but one, I mean, she's my best friend. So doing a podcast mm-hmm. with your best friend is awesome. Um, but I really just enjoy, um, you know, the guests that we have on a lot of them are obviously our friends, but I do feel like I get to know them on a different level or like get to talk. Cause you, when you're with your friends all the time, you're just joking. You don't like ask mm. necessarily like soccer questions, especially when you're in the soccer world all the time. Mm-hmm. So I think that doing that and getting to know them on that level mm-hmm. and then, one of my other favorite things is just connecting with the fans, like how many people have come up and say how they love snacks and how mm-hmm. it's gotten them through their day or, yeah. um, you know, it helped them with whatever. Or I just saw somebody talk about, I said, like, when you're doing PKs, make sure you're, you take a deep breath and center yourself. And then I saw a tweet about it um, later on. And I was like, wow, I really feel like I'm like a part of that person's life. But yeah, what's your guys' favorite part? Mm. Just that, talking to rad people all the time. And for us, it's yeah. all rad women. Well, you are all women too. So yeah. Yeah, all soccer. Yeah, you're all soccer. But we, yeah, we get a, I, for me, I don't know about Lynn, but me is like, just you get to talk to the most interesting people. I, yeah. I love that and get to know them on a different level. Yeah, and like different perspectives as well. Like sometimes I hear something that I was like, oh, I never even thought about that. Yeah. But now that you say that, that does make sense. Totally. Yeah. Totally. All right, I've got two. And this, so we're, this is our fourth year of working together, Julie and I, on the podcast. And it occurred to me along the way that we're not just doing a podcast about women's sports, we're doing a podcast about joy. Mm. Yeah. And then the other one is this idea of sticky thoughts, thoughts that stick with you after the podcast. And during one of your answers, I was writing down things that you were saying where I'm like, this is sticking, this is sticking, <laughs> those moments what where I take it? something with me. Was it? it was the back roads, the resiliency, because oh. uh, I can relate to that. Yeah, I, I like those answers too. I just, yeah. yeah, well, I just think that like a lot of people, you don't know how many people connect to you. I think like as a society, we always want to feel connected to somebody else and you Mm. never know what you say is going to like stick with somebody or Mm. because it's your life. You like, don't think about it all the time. You're like, this is just my story that I'm going through life. But then when you have a podcast or you get to actually speak about it, you never know which part is going to stick with somebody and, and either change their life or whatever. So I really enjoy that part of it as well. Mm. I was thinking, I, I wonder if you journal at all, because I think there's a book in you. <laughs> I know. I've, I, I try to journal, you guys. I'm not like mm-hmm. a writer at all. It like is really You're hard like, for me I to do. I just want to knit. I just want to knit. But I did journal the whole World Cup, which was, <sighs> cool. I thought was really important and that I would want to look back at it one day. So maybe I'll keep doing that for at least major things. Yeah. But it, Julie, do you want hard. to share I know. I was like, do, do I even want to share my heart-wrenching yeah, you gotta story? You got to tell it. You got to tell it. <laughs> Maybe if I just keep telling it, it's, it will surface. <laughs> yeah. I did the same thing. I, I was a journaler in college and, and okay. in my younger years. I don't journal as much anymore, but I used to journal a lot. I used to keep a quote book all the time. But during the 99 World Cup, I journaled the whole damn World Cup. I mean, oh, cool. every night, I journal, journal, journal. And yeah. mind you, this is kind of pre-social media, pre like. I mean, we had phones, but not like you weren't on them like we are now, right? Like, so yeah. you just had time. And I would, I just documented it all in this journal. It was chock full. We got invited to go see a female astronaut launch from um, the Kennedy Space Center. And we got to go fly with Hillary Clinton. And mm-hmm. they're like, do you want to go in Air Force One, the team? This is after we won the World Cup. We were at the White House. And they're like, do you want to go fly with the team to go watch this astronaut? Who The name escapes me. I apologize. This woman. And... um. 
We're like, yeah. So I'm journaling on the plane and I leave it on the freaking Air Force One <gasps> no. and we can't, we cannot find it. Like I I asked her chief of staff, like it got either thrown away or someone has a really good journal with a lot of good shit in there. Yeah, somebody it, for sure has it. I don't I don't I, think you just throw that away. I know. I was like, oh, who has Julie's who journal? Who has my journal? Give it back. It's a good book out of that. I mean, I I even kept Dang. the dirt. I kept the tea in there. I, I spilled the tea. I did. Oh, I did blackmailed. I, Somebody's blackmailed yeah, you for I was sure. Like, I cannot believe the, someone hasn't like, you know. How much would you pay for that if it's being blackmailed? What's your number? Mm. A good twenty grand. Yeah, I was Ooh. thinking that twenty k. Yeah. Okay. You guys hear that? Julie will give you twenty k <laughs> if you <laughs> give her journal, journal back. back. You yeah, who has it? <laughs> All she wants is her journal back. Uh, high, low, cheer. It is the high of your career, the low of your career, and the cheer is for someone who's helped you along the way that you're grateful for. And you can start with your high. So going back through your career, mm. your high of your career, low of your career, and someone that you would like to cheer for to show gratitude. The high of my career would be the oh, the high of my career would be the Olympics. Um, getting the start after they opened up the roster because I anything was better than what I was originally yes. promised. Yeah. Um, and then I obviously got the start and and scored and had my my assist. So that would have to Sam incredible to my bestie Sam. She really Wait. threw her body at that ball. Can we just give it a little bit of context? You were the alternate on the Olympic team. COVID happens. Yes. And then, or COVID extended the roster. You get added to the roster. Mm -hmm. When you start, you crush. Yeah. In, in the, was that the quarterfinals against the Netherlands? That was the, yeah, that was the quarterfinals. It was, right? yeah, win and move on and lose and go home. So it was like a must win game. Yeah. And you, you score you assist and then score uh, yeah. at the time the game winner. They come back to tie it, but you guys win a PKs. Yes. Yes, I know. Um, so I would say that was the high of my career. The low of my career would probably be being cut from the 2019 World Cup, um, mm. that team, and just being dropped from allocation. I like just that whole, not that exact moment, but that whole year. Um, just because I like, I feel like I've said this story for a long time, but like when you want something so bad, mm -hmm. sometimes you squeeze onto it and then you stop doing the things that got you there. And mm -hmm. I would wanted the World Cup so bad that I was afraid to make a mistake. And, mm -hmm. and then in turn, I was making all of the mistakes and then I just wasn't playing like myself. And then I was like a shell of my playing ability. Um, so then looking back now, it's like, okay, I don't think I was actually mentally ready to go, but it's still like heartbreaking in the moment. Um, so those, that would be a low, I think. It's so funny because you would think like injuries would be a low, but because I've had so many, like I just, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know what it takes to get back. They suck a lot. Don't get right. me wrong. I don't recommend them, but I'm like, yeah, like I'll, right. I'll get back. Like I'll survive. Um, so I would say those are my highs and my lows. And then somebody who's gotten me through everything. Oh. I'm, it's not just one person, but I just think my family, like I am a huge family person. My mom has just been with me the whole time. Um, Marley has, we've been together for eight, almost nine years now, long distance. And I think that just having somebody who allows me to be me and supports me in that and recognizes that like, I only have a short time to do this in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, so he like supports me full heartedly. Um, and then just like, I think about my extended family on from that is they just see me like Lynn as Lynn. Like I think about my nieces and my nephew, like they just want to hang out with me and they just want to, they call me T Lynn cause they can't say auntie, but <laughs> T Lynn. Um, and they just see me as just a human. So I think that that is so special to me of, you know, there's so many times when people are like Lynn, the soccer player. And I'm like, no, I just want to be Lynn. Um, and that even in the, in the, 
almost the down moments more than the high moments. The down moments are like, we don't care. Like literally, like you're, you're going to be fine. Like, yeah, you tried your best. It didn't work out. Who cares? You're still Lynn and we love you. So yeah. I just think that like my whole family in that sense has just been like, I couldn't ask for a better family. Mm. I love that. Well, congratulations again on the wedding in December. Thank Have you. a fabulous time with that. Thank you. We and, are so excited. And congratulations on just this, these, these last few years in itself, like that what you've had to come through and fight through and, and that resilience that you talked about and Thanks. it shining through and you finding the joy in all of this, which is so important in everything we do. I think too, owning it as well hearing you own that yeah is huge yeah i think that like uh, well i'm just like a super realistic person like like am i ever gonna be a rosalbell no so like <laughs> why why pretend like i'm just like i can only be lynn like this is what i'm good at i play this way and i've also learned that like life and soccer is subjective like I it will always be the same player and one coach can love me and another coach can hate yeah. me and I'm like I'm still the same player so like why am I putting so much stock into this like I just might as well just play and enjoy and love yeah. the game instead of putting like what do they think about me and I think that like goes hand in hand in life as well you're just like this is who I am you either love it or you don't All right. right very freeing amen amen yeah. amen amen sister was fun oh what a way so to start fun. the season right on lynn heck yeah thank you lynn takeaways lynn i'll go first okay i feel like when she talked about and you you may have a similar tape takeaway because you mentioned it in the podcast but when she talked about taking the back roads oh totally um, one of the things that hit me is that it's such a good reminder i love these little reminders because i'm living in with my kids right now that we all have our own path, which takes its own time. It has its own roots. It's got different scenery. <laughs> it's a different journey, right? Everyone's pace is different. Mm -hmm. And she she eventually gets to where she wants to go. But um, as she acknowledged, you know, she clearly went that road less travel. So it's a great reminder for those listening who aren't there yet, mm -hmm. wherever there is and whatever there means, that sometimes you just got to enjoy the scenery and your own pace. And yeah. you'll get there. You'll <laughs> get there. Oh, I love how you put that, or your own scenery. Mm hmm That's very good. I have a few takeaways. Number one, lens are awesome. <laughs> Duh. Obvi. Number two, I also connected with Lynn when she talked about taking the back doors. I have done that a lot in my career in particular where the front door was not open and felt like it was padlocked. So it's like, all right, well, let's <laughs> find a window that's cracked open and it might be on the third floor and I have to climb a tree and then shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> a rain gutter to get to it but i'm gonna find a way and I, yeah the, and there is some scenery along the way when that's when that's kind of the path yeah and number three i am now super interested to talk with dawn staley again about how she approaches coaching the usa basketball team because i would imagine she faces similar challenges that lynn talked about in this episode Mm hmm. Or you don't have a lot of time together. I think all national team coaches do because most don't have a lot of time. Although I will say not everyone has a professional league, so maybe that's not entirely true, but basketball for sure. Yeah. What does she do? What's, what is the secret sauce that she developed mm -hmm. in order to navigate that? Because they have well, that basketball team has very little time together, as far as I know, before competitions. Or maybe she just wants to coach the U.S. women's soccer team. I don't know. I'd take Don for that, too. <laughs> for real. Come on. What about Come a on. Staley Foudy head coach, assistant coach situation? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Julie, this Julie should never be in a coaching conversation. <laughs> Donuts for everyone every day. Let's go. <laughs> Questions permitted, please. This comes from Charlotte. Dear Julie Foudy and Lynn Ozawi, my name is Charlotte and my mom Valerie is probably number one in the Julie Foudy fan club. 
My brother Mm -hmm. and I are submitting this question as a birthday present for her. Oh, for Valerie? Yes. What was the, what was, um, the daughter's name? Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. That's very sweet of you to think of your mom. Okay. What is the high, low cheer and funniest thing of your career? Thank you so much. And please continue to make podcasts. We really appreciate how you have impacted our lives for the better. Sincerely, Charlotte. Oh, come on. Charlotte, you gotta get me all emotional. <laughs> um, okay, and happy birthday, Valerie, or Val. Can I call you Val? I like to shorten everything. Um, Val's my pal. Uh, hi of my career. Mm-hmm. She said, not life. Hi, my career. You're right. Oh, gosh. Well, which career, Charlotte? I had a feeling you were going to ask that, and I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, soccer feels kind of boring. Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. Soccer feels boring. I'll do soccer. All right, I'll do soccer. <laughs> Hi. I think everyone thinks... Ni- I feel like I've done this before. Maybe not. Hi, everyone thinks 1999, which... Clearly was a high. Yes, that was amazing. That World Cup. Brandy getting naked. Amazing. (laughs) Just happy it wasn't me. I was next. No one wants to see this abdomen. These love handles. But I actually think my high was 2004 Mm. when we won the Olympics because I was going out. Mia was going out. Joy was going out, so we knew it was the last time we had a chance. And had I gone out without a gold medal, I told my husband, Ian, I would be a bitch for the rest of my life. And that he really needed to put some heavy prayers and thought into how he was going to make sure we won this gold medal. Did Ian manifest Abby Wambach for that Olympics? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I think he, too, would like to kiss Abby Wambach's forehead, which I do all the time every time I see her. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> and Lindsay Tarpley scored a cracker, two youngsters. Anyways, we won that Olympics against a very good Brazilian team that who had Marta on it and a lot of other really good players. Probably they should have beat us, but somehow we pulled it out. And that becomes way high because I got to retire on a gold medal as yeah. every athlete dreams. Damn. Low. Viking bitches, 2000 Olympics, Norway. <laughs> Still hate them. Cheer. I'm not going to go into that because it just brings up a lot of no, bad memories. No, you, you don't even I need just, to. I just get very angry. Uh, low, but it was good because then we won the next Olympics, I guess. Uh, cheer. Um, of my career. God, I don't know. I'd I'd probably say Ian, my husband, Mm. because like that life is a hard life in terms of you're never home. You're always gone. And this is what we've seen with people who are on the national team or professional athletes. Like your partner, your spouse is um, the most important component of your career. If they are not loving you doing that and you feel guilty all the time and um, your career is not going to take off. And he was so incredibly supportive of like, go chase this dream. Go do it. Go do everything you want to do. Um, never made me feel guilty. Never, not, you know, and you get a lot of, especially female athletes, professional athletes who are in relationships where the guy is like, or the partner is like, I, I can't do this. It's, I don't see you enough. It's too much, whatever. So yeah. Yay, Ian. <laughs> And one more funniest thing of your career. Oh, was that also in there? Yeah. I wasn't listening. See? Better <laughs> listening skills, Julie. 2023 goal. Hasn't come around yet. We're in October. Still got time. Um, funniest thing of my career? Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I don't, I don't know. Those... those that group of old bags was funny. Yeah. Everywhere we went, it was fun. 
I mean, from Mia's impersonations to Brandy's, you know, being late to everything and making fun of her nonstop. I mean, she's so easy. To Lil, to, I mean, it's just, if anyone listened to the 99ers episode, you guys know it's constant chaos and craziness. But that's what we loved about them. Mm -hmm. So I can't point to one. That'd be too hard. I'd need a lot of time to think about that. Good question, Charlotte. It's a long season. We can revisit that. The funniest thing of your career on episode 10 of season 10. (laughs) Give it some thought. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Yeah. Thank you, Charlotte. Happy birthday, Valerie. Happy birthday, Valerie. Go, Mom. All right. So good to be back. Thank you for the continued support as well from our sponsors, Ally and Dick Sporting Goods. Both companies, as you all know, in the Dope Village, believe in the power of women's sports. And so that's why we love, love, love partnering with them. Thank you, as always, to the one and only Kate Diaz for our incredible theme music, which she wrote and composed. And you should go check out her music as well, Kate Diaz, D-I-A-Z. And then, of course, thank you to all y'all in our dope village, because our village is dope. We would so greatly appreciate if you like what you're hearing, or even if you're new to the party, rate, subscribe to the pod, leave comments on the Apple podcast page. Um, It absolutely matters. And again, we want to showcase that women's sports in this space can thrive uh, and be loved as well so and finally as always kids we're back remember sing it with us laughter Laughter permitted. permitted i did a little boop and a bop